Okay, and we're live. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to our Zoom participants and good afternoon to our FB Live viewers. It's going to be a fun-filled e-learning session this afternoon. Welcome to another e-learning session powered by Arriva Academy. So our topic today is how to be productive when you work from home. My name is Irish Malonda Samson. I'll be your host. And joining me is Mr. Howell Mabalot as my co-host and moderator for the question and answer portion. Hello, sir. Hello, good afternoon, Madam President Irish Malonda Samson. Okay, sir, just would like to share to our participants. Well, mm -hmm. we came up with this free learning session because in Ariba, we understand and we believe that learning should never stop. Now that we're on ECQ and actually extended, so kami continues learning. So we're, this is our share of um, corporate social responsibilities. This is our share of uh, to the society and to our participants and clients as well. So giving back. So ayan po. And also, I would like to take this opportunity to thank as well the people who help us um, come up with this e-learning session. To our Arriva family, thank you so much. To the partner speakers, guest speakers that we had, international and local subject matter experts, thank you for supporting, uh, supporting Arriva Academy in our endeavor. Thank you for giving this opportunity to us. Maraming maraming salamat in behalf of Arriva Academy. Okay, moving on. Please allow me to greet. Our, and welcome our participants from out of the country who is joining us today. Thank you for joining us, our participants from New Delhi, India, Mumbai, India, Italing Jaya, Malaysia, Lalitpur, Nepal, Central Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Singapore City, Singapore. Thank you for joining us today. And in order for us to have a smooth flow of our e-learning session, here are the house rules. For those of you is um, who are first timers here, who are first timers in our webinar, please type in the chat box, hi. Let me see who are first timers here. Khalil Lamigo, okay. Miss Judy Ann, we got a lot of uh, got a lot of first timers here. And in order for our, uh, in order for you to um, Hear us loud and clear, you will be needing a good quality headset. So please use the following codes, type in 111 to show if you can hear us. Loud and clear, we're audible, 111, okay. 222 means you can't hear us. 2121 means our sound is breaking or there's a log. And question mark if you don't understand anything. But so far, 111, loud and clear, sir. Okay, and we will be having a quick break later after the presentation of our guest speaker. A quick break before we move on to our question and answer portion. Participants' microphones will be temporarily disabled by the administrator during discussion to avoid interruptions. Questions will be entertained after each topic of the session. For questions and clarifications during the provided time after each topic, please click the raise hand button for the administrator to enable the microphone for live questions. Type in your questions at the Q&A box. Again, at the Q&A box, not in the chat box. One question at a time will be entertained. For comments and feedback, please send us your feedback, your suggestions, um, your ideas. Please scan this QR code. This will be directed to our feedback form. This will help us improve our future e-learning sessions. Thank you. And to introduce our speaker to discuss how to be productive when you work from home, Sir Howell Mabalot, do the honors in introducing our guest speaker today. Thank you so much, Madam Irish Malonda Samson, our beloved president of Riva Academy. Thank it you, is sir. indeed a pleasure of mine to introduce to our Facebook Live audience, our Zoom participants, our YouTube viewers, and our LinkedIn viewers, our highly esteemed speaker for this afternoon. He is the practice leader, future of work tech at People's Trump, an India-based enterprise HRSAS platform with over 15 years of HR entrepreneurial experience and had won two HR Vendors of the Year Award and is the recipient 
to SHRI HR Entrepreneur of the Year in 2013. He's also the creator of Singapore HR Tech Market Map and is a jobs commentator on Channel News Asia. Let's all welcome everyone, Mr. Adrian Tan. Hi, Sir Adrian. Hi, hello everyone. Thank you so much for the invitation and thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here today. And thank you for accepting our invitation, Sir Adrian. Yep. So uh, thank you so much everyone for the time today. So uh, I would just go straight into the presentation in consideration of your time. Uh, but prior to it, uh, a shout out to all the, I think there's 225 of you out there. Appreciate the time that you have given to me as well as Arriva uh, over your precious Friday afternoon. So I'll just start sharing my presentation and we'll go straight into it. Just give me a second, please. No problem, sir. Okay, uh, can I just confirm if everyone is able to see this? All good? All right, so I'll start off. So again, thank you so much for um, for your time today. And uh, I, my what I want to share with you today is really about productivity uh, when you're working remotely. Uh, and I'm, I'm very certain over this period of time, uh, things has been very, very trying. Uh, based on where I am right now in Singapore, we have been gone, uh, going through a lockdown period over the past one month or so. Uh, and for many of us, uh, working remotely might be something very new. Uh, the, so the, the thing about working remotely, of course, is the preparation behind it and also trying to find a very conducive environment. I'll share more into this as we move along. So within my presentation today, I'll actually break it into two different portions. I'm quite certain some of you might be people managers. So from the employer standpoint, some of the key challenges that you want to take note of and some of the things that you could try to uh, counter those challenges. And also at the individual uh, level, what are the things that you can take note of? So I'll just start off by running through a bit of background. So uh, myself, I'm currently with a company called People Strong, so an India-based enterprise HR SaaS company. We started in around 2008, and then we have expanded into Singapore and Thailand, essentially providing a full spectrum of HR tech solution. Uh, we are also looking into the Philippines market right now, uh, and we were quite deep into it until, of course, the whole COVID-19 thing happened. Uh, so started in HR about 16 years back in recruitment and then outplacement, career coaching, and now HR technology. So my experience in remote work really started in, um, I think that's about 2012, 2013. Uh, so towards the tail end of my business in recruitment, uh, I actually went into career coaching and it was really a very uh, a solopreneur kind of thing. So over that period of time, because I was doing it myself and I need to do a lot of bootstrapping, so I learned how to do uh, search engine optimization. I've learned how to uh, to put together a website. Uh, and of course, I don't have an office back then, so a lot of work done remotely at home on my dining table. Uh, but of course, as I started going through this, I realized actually it's not that conducive. There must be a certain way I could do to help me work better. So that is where I evaluated a lot of tools and technology to help me function better, which uh, I'm going to share with you more, uh, some of my top three as we move along in this presentation. So right now, as you probably would know uh, or read by now, many countries are under this uh, lockdown mode. Uh, Singapore is one of them. Uh, many different countries are experiencing their version of lockdown. Uh, and of course, by doing so, uh, productivity are likely to take a hit. Uh, this, is the, this is an article that is cited by the Singapore Straits Times, as many firms are not really ready for remote work. Uh, remote work actually in Singapore has been um, encouraged for the longest time. Uh, however, encouragement is one thing. Uh, many companies are just not very keen to consider working in a very different way. Uh, compared to what they're accustomed to. So many just did not uh, move into it 
uh, in a deeper, meaningful way. So things got suspended, and right now many companies are caught off guard, uh, and they just have to make do with whatever they know and try to make things work. So for many companies, this is really a first. It's the first time that they have to go through something of such magnitude. And uh, in of course, in an ideal world, uh, we are looking into establishing uh, clear remote work policy, uh, advanced training. And this is something that uh, many companies that has been well prepared would have uh, thought through. So in, in my previous career, I was actually advocating for companies to consider uh, all these uh, ways, different ways of remote work. And these are the key, two key things that any company must uh, put in place. So very clear remote work policies, because you have to understand when it comes to remote work, everyone will be having a different experience. Uh, some may have a study table, some may have not, some may have a conducive environment, some may not. So all these have to be taken into consideration. So for each of your unique different employees, what are the things they could take note of because no one is going to teach them. The company would have to. And of course, training in advance. What kind of training are we talking about? Again, training related to policy, training related to what's going to happen uh, when things doesn't work. So for example, when you are having an issue in, in the office, if you have an IT issue, you can just pick up your phone or walk over to your IT colleague and get some troubleshooting done. But when you're at home, you will be you function very differently. So how do you go about doing so? to ensure that your productivity is minimally affected. So uh, in, in current crisis time, and of course in such a changing circumstance, uh, this level of preparation may not be feasible for many. Uh, so we have to look at specific steps that a manager can take we, without great effort to improve the engagement and productivity of remote employees. So what are the things that we're looking at? So to start off, managers need to understand there are a few factors that can make remote work especially demanding. Uh, usually high performing employees may experience decline in job performance and engagement when they begin working remotely, especially in the absence of preparation as tra in, and training as uh, mentioned earlier. So what kind of challenges are we looking at? Well, there are four key challenges uh, inherent to remote work. And the first one would be the lack of face-to-face -face supervision. So many employees on uh, will, be, will be struggling with reduced access to managerial support and communication. And in some cases, employees may feel that uh, remote managers are out of touch with their needs and therefore are neither supportive nor helpful in getting their work done. So we will just focus on the challenges first. I'll touch on later on what kind of remedy and uh, solution we can look at. Next, lack of access to information. Now, this go beyond just task-related work uh, because uh, research has actually shown that a lack of mutual knowledge among remote workers translates to lower willingness to give co-workers the benefit of doubt in difficult situations. So even when it comes to trying to get something from your colleague, because there is no physical um, interaction, you won't be able to detect whether that person is is actually being rude to you or they are actually short of time. So when you receive a brisk email from, uh, from them as a natural product of their stress, you may interpret it very differently. So uh, and the inability to understand their current circumstances, you may take offense and of course at, uh, think poorly of their professionalism. And of course, all this will result in lower collaboration, lower communication, which of course uh, would result in lower productivity. Now, social isolation. Uh, I'm not sure for all of you here, but for myself, the past three to four weeks has been extremely challenging. Initially, it was still quite okay. I tried to maintain my own schedule and all that, but uh, as things move along, it can really be very, very painful. Uh, especially for people who are extroverts, uh, they will suffer from is this isolation more in the short run than any one of us. I, I'm Even for me as an introvert, I'm already finding it to be extremely challenging. Uh, and of course, isolation can cause any employees to feel less belong to the organization and may even result in an increased intention to leave the company when the dust has settled. And lastly, something which uh, I think would probably affect many of us would be distraction at home. So, you know, uh, Typically, we, we would want to encourage uh, your remote workers to have dedicated workspace and, of course, adequate childcare, etc., before you start 
uh, your remote work. But when it comes to sudden transition, uh, all this could be very, very challenging. Uh, and in the case of school and daycare closures, uh, you also have to take on unexpected parenting responsibilities. In my case, in Singapore context, uh, schools are not operating, but studying still goes on. So we have something called home-based learning. Fortunately, it's going to end by end of next week, uh, where parents would take on the responsibility to homeschool the children with material provided by the teachers. Uh, a lot of these are done electronically, but still it adds a lot of angst and, uh, and stress for parents, uh, especially during the course of their learning, because uh, you will realize as a parent, you don't just play the role of a teacher, you also have to play the role as IT support in making sure that their laptop is okay, the browser is able to access this website, so on and so forth. So I'm very certain many of you might be familiar with this. Uh, this, I, I, uh, this basically uh, was made famous in one of a real-time broadcast, a live broadcast, where the kid of this broadcaster, who happens to be working from home, snuck in uh, to du during the call uh, that his father has and was just playing around and as slowly another kid came into the video as well. Uh, and then the, the mother has to rush in and bring all of them out and it became a huge news and really went viral on social. So let's look at how managers can then support all these remote employees. So over here, I'm gonna to touch on six actionable steps that managers can consider right now uh, to make this whole experience much more conducive. So as much as remote work can be fraught with challenges, uh, there are relatively quick and inexpensive things that managers can do to ease the transition. So let's start with the first one. The first thing is to establish a structured check-in. Now, many successful remote managers establish a daily call with their remote employees. This could take the form of a series of one-on-one -on -one calls. If employees work more independently from each other or a team call if their work is highly collaborative, uh, the important thing is the calls are regular, predictable, and they are a forum in which employees know that they can consult with you. And of course, during the call, if they have any concerns, any questions, they'll be heard. So that's one thing. And of course, this will also address the situation where over time, due to prolonged social isolation, they may feel uh, a dip in the sense of belonging to the company. So ensuring the frequency in conversation, that is extremely important. Now, next, of course, uh, you would want to provide, uh, you want to provide different communication technology option. Now, when uh, anyone has to work remotely, collaboration is still a must. Email alone is insufficient. Uh, remote workers really benefit from having richer technology, such as what we're doing right now, video conferencing. Can you imagine if we were to go back to the period of uh, 2003 when SARS happened? Uh, back then, there's no Zoom. Uh, internet bandwidth is not as good as it is. Uh, there was really no such option where we could still continue to have this uh, engaging discussion. But in today's context, that is very much possible. In fact, over and beyond, because you, we have video conferencing to do one thing. We also have other technology, other tools to help in collaboration. Uh, we have individual messaging uh, tools like Slack. We have a uh, we, of course, have Microsoft Teams, and I've also mentioned Zippy here. So, uh, this quick disclaimer, Zippy is actually a tool that my company com came up with. So to help uh, remote workers collaborate better, uh, beyond just what a typical consumer messaging system could do. So it's not just one-to-one -one or one-to-many kind of communication. Going beyond that, because when it comes to a work setting, it is not just communication. It is also about task setting, task management, performance setting, performance management, and over and above, there may be certain things you may not even want to get uh, your staff to, to handle because they, they are too mundane, they, are, they, are too, they don't really add value. For example, in time like this, uh, your employee may have certain questions regarding uh, some HR policy, maybe some medical policy because they are interested to go and go to a doctor to check something out. Um, 
you can imagine if you have a small HR team, they are going to be overwhelmed by all this daily bite-sized inquiry. So perhaps the possibility of having a chatbot to entertain all this inquiry so that your HR professional could continue to take on higher value work. And of course, end of the day, uh, all this technology in place, you also have to make sure that they are well secured. So look at enterprise uh, version of uh, communication tools or technologies uh, to ensure that it fits very well into whatever your IT department may be looking at. So just a quick shout out, uh, because of what is going on right now, my company is actually making our tool free for use. Uh, tool is called Zippy. It's actually a four-in-one uh, platform combining chat, task performance, and a chatbot. So for anyone that's keen, go to a website, you can take a look. So next thing, of course, we want to look into establishing rules of engagement. Now, remote work becomes more efficient and satisfying when managers set expectation for the frequency, means, and ideal timing of communication for their team. So for example, we use video conferencing for daily check-in meetings, but we use IM when something is urgent. Uh, and also, if you can, let your employees know the best way and time to reach you during work day. So for example, you may want to tell them, I tend to be more available late in the day uh, for a home phone or video conversation, but if there's any emergency early in the day, send me a text. Uh, and also keep an eye on communication among team members uh, to ensure that they're sharing information as needed. So the recommendation is for managers to establish all these rules as soon as possible, ideally during the first online check-in meeting. So something along the line of what uh, was done uh, earlier today, uh, today is actually my fifth, fifth webinar uh, for the month. And I really like the way that Arriva has uh, done that um, administration prep earlier, earlier before everything else to guide everyone on what to do. If you have question, this number, if you don't have question, that number, if you cannot hear again. So all these rules of engagement is very important to ensure things are done in a smooth flowing manner. So likewise, when it comes to remote work, you want to minimize all this friction, anticipate all this bottleneck uh, and this can be done through uh, very firm and structured rules of engagement. Now, you also want to provide opportunities for remote social interaction. So the easiest way to establish some form of this is at least sometime at the beginning of team calls, just for non-work item. You know, you can ask things like, oh, we're going to spend the first few minutes just catching up. How was your weekend? Uh, other things that you could do might be virtual pizza parties. So uh, my, uh, for, for example, my wife company, they just did uh, lunch together remotely. So uh, on a regular non-COVID-19 situation, they actually have a regular catch-up lunch uh, on Friday or every Friday, I can't remember. Uh, but since that is not possible right now, as everyone has are stuck at home, they use their budget to provide uh, for every individual to order something uh, online. For delivery to their home and then they would uh, lunch together remotely through zoom call uh, to really again keep up the interaction among the team at a social level and this would definitely help to reduce feelings of isolation and also to help promote a sense of belonging sorry and uh, finally offer encouragement and emotional support especially in the context of um, an abrupt shift to remote work, it is important for managers to acknowledge the stress, listen to employees' anxiety and concern and empathize with their struggles. Uh, if they're clearly struggling, ask them how they're feeling. Uh, even a general question such as, how is this remote work situation working out for you so far? Can really elicit important information that you might not otherwise hear. And once you ask the question, be sure to listen carefully to the response. Paraphrase it to them. Uh, let them know that their stress, their concern will be the focus of this conversation. So uh, th this is really how you can take a two-pronged approach in both acknowledging the stress and anxiety that employees may be feeling and also providing affirmation uh, of their confidence in the team to let them know that you've got this, uh, we can look at ways to tackle this together and so that your employees are more likely to take up the challenge with a sense of purpose and focus. So those are the portions that I have touched on related to uh, what the management could do. 
uh, and what the companies could do in trying to address certain aspects of uh, remote work, uh, given that it came quite sudden for, for many of us. The next thing that I'd like to touch on, and this is something that is much closer to me, would be individual productivity, because many times I also realize uh, the, the, the easiest thing for you to control is yourself. And once you set all these things in place, uh, everything else will be much, much easier. So uh, I would move ahead and share with you what I have uh, identified over this period of time. And I think importantly is, of course, uh, looking at uh, how it may make sense for you. Now, whatever that I'm going to share here in the rest of the slide may not work for you 100%. Uh, because I'm only experimenting this in my personal context and my context would be very different from every one of you. Having said that, I hope you would not just discard it entirely. It might work for you in some variation or maybe you have to make some adjustments, some modification. Uh, either case, I would highly suggest to give it a go. Do bite-sized experimentation and see what works, what sticks and what doesn't. If it doesn't, drop it. If it works, are you able to double down on it? Are you able to maybe find a 1% improvement on it? So I'm going to start off and share with you what kind of stuff that I do. So firstly, I, I think uh, given what uh, we are facing right now, what you want to do, or at least what I have been doing, is to front load my daily wellness routine uh, because that really gives me a good uh, wake-up uh, notion to the day. And... Uh, I try to bring it forward to as early as I can. So this is my typical schedule right now. So I would do a workout followed by my meditation routine. As much as I can, I would what I'd like to admit that there have been days where I just would prefer very much to sleep in. Uh, so don't stress yourself over the fact that, oh no, I, 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 I fell off for, for this day. Uh, I'm not going to pick it up again. Uh, don't, don't be worried about that. I think by and large, if you're able to hit 80%, 70%, it is good enough. Don't stress yourself over it. Uh, there's a lot of things that you have to take care of. And of course, uh, in your own shoe, you will know better what you could do to the best of your ability and what are the other challenges you have in your life. But personally, for me, I will start off with a 30 minutes exercise followed by 15 to 25 minutes of unguided meditation. Um, for, for those of you who would, want to do use something that keep tracks of all this so for my running i and training i actually use an app by nike they have a nike run club nike training club and for meditation i usually use oak or i usually use 10 percent so either one would do uh and um, the good thing about doing all this early in the morning is i have clocked them and for the rest of my day I don't have to worry about them. I've already done my exercise, I've done my wellness, everything is done and cleared rather than being interrupted uh, uh, or, or rather but then in, being interrupted uh, mid of the day and then you have to go for a run during lunchtime and during lunchtime it's extremely hot in Singapore. So the second thing that I would usually do is I would try to schedule everything and I really mean everything. Uh, so because procrastination really happens to the best of us. Uh, right, writing an article could be a huge, huge procrastination. Putting this deck together is a huge procrastination when Arriva first approached me. So I will put everything into my calendar to ensure I would pick it up uh, by my schedule. And this is something that I actually learned from uh, Jeff Weiner, uh, the CEO or maybe the former CEO. I, I understand that he has, he's, he has resigned. The importance of scheduling nothing. So according to Jeff, he actually scheduled two blocks of time per week. Each block could be about two hours, one and a half hours. And the block of time actually carry no entry. Essentially, it is empty time. It is downtime. But the downtime is for him to think. So no meetings, no calls, nothing, just for him to strategize, to think. So it is like your mini corporate retreat in bite size. That is what he advocated for. I took it a bit a, a step further uh, to really uh, schedule everything that I need to do so that procrastination will never kick in. And procrastination can creep in very easily, especially in the comfort of your own home. So I would highly suggest you give that a try. Uh, and next thing that I try to emphasize, and this is something that was also touched upon earlier during the 
uh, earlier part of the presentation is, are you able to reduce your time train? So what do I mean by that? Uh, usually when, when you look at any form of communication, uh, do you actually came up with Zippy to, to promote that? And guess what? Things can still work. Uh, for non-scheduled calls, uh, uh, I would usually try to ignore them because honestly, if it's so important, uh, the person most likely will call again or the message would follow through. So I think it is also good in setting that standard. So again, uh, your management may set you a standard. You may also want to set the same standard across to ensure that certain communication is not at the right time so that you can really be very productive to conduct your deep work. Deep work will never happen if you are constantly interrupted with phone calls or messages every other minute. So try to uh, experiment with this as well and try to condense any possible interaction into a less time-consuming mode uh, as you move along. So personally for myself, I do my analytical work early in the day. And as I shared earlier on in Singapore, we have home-based learning. Uh, my kids usually wake up around 8 a.m., uh, which is also why I have this motivation to wake up even earlier. Uh, so usually when I can make it, I wake up at 5.30, 5.45, I'll go for my exercise. Once I've done everything, it would still be the just the break of dawn, so about 7 a.m. So from 7 to 8, I actually have one hour of quiet time that I can do a lot of stuff. And in the morning, I really try to uh, apply more analytical work. Now, uh, it may be morning for me, it may be evening for you for the night hours out there. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but for those of you who want who is interested to find out more, there is a very interesting book by Daniel H. Pink called When. The scientific secrets of perfect timing. So, whatever that timing works for you, you may want to uh, package your day around it to ensure during that block of time you truly can have it for yourself. Ensure uh, no one will be disturbing you over that period of time so that you can do your most solid, productive work. And for the rest, of course, you, you just have to entertain those interruptions. Now, something that I always uh, do is I would use a earbud, even though I am working at home right now, unlike in the office setting, and I will try to pair it with Baroque music. Uh, and this is actually this actually came about because uh, research has been done, and the gener and researcher generally agree that Baroque music from Bach, Handel, Vivaldi, Scarlatti um, is best for creativity. Uh, so, I. Uh, Usually, I would before I learned about this, I actually sometimes played uh, music from radio. Sometimes I'll just run any random playlist on Spotify, and sometimes I would even listen to podcasts. Listening to podcasts is a huge mistake because it is just listening to podcasts require your attention. Just like this webinar, every one of you would have to pay attention to my voice and also whatever is on the screen. Imagine doing that and working at the same time. It just doesn't work. You'll just be very shallow in every aspect. So I have make it a point to just listen to Baroque music because Baroque music usually are only instruments, nothing else. So it is very good background music for me to keep my brain moving and pay more attention. And that I believe uh, it may be a placebo effect, uh, but I feel it had helped me to become more productive. So next thing is to use technology to save time. Now, um, during my earlier period of solopreneurship, uh, I, I shared earlier on, I've experimented and tried to identify different tools that I could use to make my work much easier and better. And um, because in my opinion, if I can try to automate this, uh, I would be able to get the technology to do it in a much better way than myself. So for example, some of the tools I've been using, I've been using a pointlet, which is a tool that I use to do scheduling. So instead of sending emails, ding dong to and fro to identify a common slots, I integrate my three, all Office 365 and Google Calendar into a pointlet. Uh, use uh, anyone that wants to book an appointment with me, they will go to my public page. They will be able to pick the available slots and get an appointment or meeting invite sent to their calendar as well as my calendar. So I don't have to do anything. 
Second thing which I've been using very well is called follow up then. Now in my in the context of my work, I do a lot of marketing, uh, sometimes lead generation as well. And uh, as we scale, the number of people that we speak with become countless. Uh, it's very hard to remember every single person that we speak with or interacted with. And many times conversation doesn't just work in a way where one conversation will suffice. You have to keep the conversation going. You have to do a lot of follow-ups. So follow-up then is a way, good way for me to remind myself to do the follow-up. And this is purely through email. If you know how to use email, you know how to use follow-up. So I can set, so let's say I, I'll email something to, to, to a contact. I would BCC or CC uh, five days at followupden.com. Uh, essentially what this is telling uh, follow-up then is five days later, pop up this email back into my inbox. So in a way, this also helped me to achieve inbox zero, uh, which is something that works for me because I am quite an OCD person. Uh, so it helps me to be reminded of what I need to do, of when I need to follow up. Uh, and it really helped me to ensure everything, uh, nothing get missed out. Now, the third thing that I'm using uh, very often nowadays is something called CRISP. Now, Chris is actually an app, I'm, in fact, I'm using it right now, uh, that mute background noises using software. Yeah, so once you have this installed, uh, you are able to uh, mute the, the background noise. So it could be maybe uh, the sound of wind, the sound of baby crying, the sound of your dog barking. Somehow they are able to use AI to mute or reduce it significantly so that the clarity of voice would be much better. And lastly, author.ai. Uh, this is something that I am using in my correspondence with people because as part of my job, I would have to uh, gather information from other people and turn it into content. And to make it easy for the other party to contribute, uh, I try to reduce friction. Uh, so I, instead of telling them to write down their reply, I would tell them, why don't you just record a video? Oh, sorry, record an audio and send it to me. I'll get it transcribed. So the burden of transcribing, of turning it into written material is on me. But then I'm also a lazy person. I do not want to spend time or, or even money to find someone on Fiverr to transcribe it. So what do I do? There is actually an app called author.ai. They use this AI to intelligently transcribe uh, the audio file into words. It is not 100% accurate uh, given that Singaporeans or many of us in Southeast Asia, we speak of an accent. Uh, it would definitely have an impact uh, on accuracy. But I think by and large, you would be able to hit about 80%, 70%, which is good enough. So instead of writing from scratch or transcribing from scratch, you just have to do simple editing. Next, screen time, uh, I set it for myself. Uh, I have mine from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. So during this period of time, no notification. Of course, I can override it, uh, but every time I see screen time alert, I try to remind myself why I have it in the first place. So when I have downtime, I really have downtime. Uh, and also there may be certain period where you do not want to have interruptions. Maybe morning is a period of time where you want to have no interruptions. You may want to apply screen time. And that also lead me to the other thing, which is of course notification. I'll touch on that a bit later on. Uh, when, I sh had, when I initially shared this, uh, many people actually disagree with me here. Again, to, to each their own, but I do feel that uh, reading the news, especially today, uh, is really going down a rabbit hole uh, because there's just so many things out there and you just go from one channel to another. When I was still reading news, a lot of news, you go from Today Online to Straits Times, Business Times, Channel News Asia, South China, Morning Post, Washington Post, New Yorker, so on and so forth. And before you know it, 30 minutes of your time is gone. It's similar to going to Reddit, similar to going down the YouTube rabbit hole. And I think one of the key things that I've learned is most news is really trivial. Yes, there are some significant part, but I think importantly is if the news is really that important, I'm very certain that someone will tell me about it. And I had that experience before. I, I stopped reading news entirely and I just get updated through my wife, through my friends about something. Uh, and I think so, and I think importantly is given uh, the current context where we have so much isolation, uh, it is very easy to get depressed and reading news which are mostly depressing, mostly negative, uh, doesn't really help. 
in your mental state. So I would highly suggest you give yourself a break or even if you want to do so, do not do it during your official working hours because again, that is going to have an impact on your mental state and, and as well as the fact that it's going to be a time sucker. So uh, <clears throat> further to what I mentioned about screen time, I want something that I've done uh, many years ago was to remove notification, especially from very noisy application. Uh, I do have WhatsApp uh, is on, but for a certain noisy group, I'll mute it for enti entire year. Uh, I don't have many social apps on my phone. Uh, I don't have LinkedIn on my phone anymore. I don't have Twitter. Uh, I do have Facebook, I do have Instagram, uh, but again, all notification is being disabled. So I don't have the batch count, I won't get alerted. So again, it prompts me to check in only at the time I think I want to check in, not when the phone tells me to. And I realized by doing so, it really helped me to shave uh, 20, 30 minutes off, uh, or, or, or rather I get to gain 20, 30 minutes of my time every day. Um, because all these are really trying to distract you from what you're trying to do. And uh, so trying to remove all this notification may really help. Uh, the initial process of doing it, depending on the model of your phone, might be very cumbersome, might be very painful, but I can assure you uh, after you've gone through the one-time pain, uh, the peace and serenity that comes with it is really worth, worth the effort. Something very minor, which uh, I would just want to point out, which is to use a mouse. Uh, I know it seems quite trivial and even silly to some, but uh, when I'm still working in an office, we our office was in uh, WeWork, I noticed a lot of people actually use their touchpad. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if you realize, but if you look at e-gamers, none of them uses a touchpad to participate in any games. The, None of them uses a touchpad to win World of Warcraft or StarCraft 2. Why? Because the mouse is faster. Uh, so uh, it may not seem a significant difference, but I feel that every interaction, every clicks, every swipe, you will be able to gain half one second. And if you add them all up, all this time matters. So with all this in place, I'm very certain you're able to make it a more productive uh, day, even when you're working remotely. And of course, uh, in doing so, uh, it also leads us to become very outcome driven. So you're gonna probably save a, fra uh, a fraction of time by implementing some of this, all of this, or a handful of this. And that will also result in a, a fair bit of downtime. Uh, and downtime can even come naturally by the sheer fact that you're no longer doing any commuting or, having, or you're having shorter lunches because there's just no uh, interaction during your lunchtime right now. So some of the uh, some of the things I'm also doing in order to maximize my downtime, uh, so that I could it could lead to a possibly more productive uh, outcome for me at work, is to first and foremost to learn new skills. So many um, personally right now I spend an hour each working day of up to an hour on a different topic after my lunch. So it range from video post production uh, from YouTube uh, to starting a podcast, which I'm still learning how to do so. Uh, and also picking up the latest digital marketing from HubSpot Academy. Sometimes I even factor in uh, things that may not apply to work. Like most recently, I finished an online course on personal finance management. Uh, and also a lot of different things that uh, I, I'm hoping to pick up, like uh, music, sketching, drawing. So whatever that may appeal to you, I think those would be a good uh, breather. Uh, for those of us that are working to really uh, stop your work entirely, focus on something else so that you can come back to your work after, re after that much more refreshed and in fact, maybe with a different perspective. So the next thing that uh, one could do is uh, to continue expanding your network. Now, uh, in today's context, because of connectivity, because of LinkedIn, Expanding your network is really very easily. Uh, personally, for me, I make use of LinkedIn to, <clears throat> to expand my network, help me narrow down to a specific target audience. Uh, I will, of course, do some background work based on their profile so that my uh, 
connection invite could be very personalized. And of course, given the time that you have, you may want to look at ways you can improve your current process. So this thing really came to me when I attended a keynote, I think about three months ago, where uh, the head of innovation from DBS Bank, he was sharing with us how his team was helping a group of back office department on how to condense their usual 18 steps process to 10. Now, um, in our personal context, of course, we won't have the benefit or the luxury of having an innovation team to help us but you will be able to look at how to improve your own process are there different ways to do things differently uh are, are you look is it possible to reduce your current 20 steps to 19 steps i think every bit count so they can make things much more productive and again to streamline everything for you because for remote work really a lot of time is about outcome so when it comes to outcome, I think an intelligent way for any worker to look into is if I could, if I can spend five hours to produce this, this work, why do I need to spend eight hours? So really trying to find the best possible way to arrive at the same, if not better outcome. Which brings me to the next point. So uh, for expanding of my network, something that I've been doing quite often, uh, it is something that I realized uh, technology can actually play a part. So previously I was doing it manually, adding one by one. Uh, and for those of you who are on LinkedIn, you will know it is very painful because every connection invite require up to three clicks, if I'm not wrong. And if you want to reach out to 100 people, that's 100 people times three clicks. Uh, so there's actually automation tools out in the market, which I realized as I try to improve my process, the one that I'm using is called Lead Connect. You'll be able to see a promo code there. Is something that they give to me because I'm one of the early adopter. I think it will give you 10% off. Uh, that's provided if you pay for it. If you're not, if not, it's perfectly fine. They have a free plan as well. So on a daily basis, um, this tool actually helped me to send a personalized connection invite to 100 people, as well as up to 300 messages to my connections every day automatically. So again, just by doing this, I could uh, just by running this, I can focus my time on other higher value work. And also spend some time to do some self-evaluation. Uh, I think it is very important to understand at this moment in time, your strength, your personality, and all this would be very helpful in trying to chart your future career as well. So it is somewhat like the company retreat that senior leaders uh, would do. They will congregate offsite for a few days. So this is like your own personal version. So I would suggest uh, going to DISC, MBTI, MBTI, Clifton Strengths, just to run through this test. And of course, all these tests may not be 100% accurate. So you may want to fairly date with your friends and close families to see how it might be useful uh, or how relevant they are for you. So that again, by leveraging, by double, uh, by leveraging on your strength, you will be able to pursue things that might be very much easier for you. So one thing that uh, Clifton Strength uh, always mentioned is work on your strength, work around your weakness. Something very different from what we are taught in school. In school, we are taught to be good in every subject. But I think Clifton Strength takes a more practical approach. Yeah, we are only good in some things, not everything. So identify what those things are and then double down on it. And lastly, I've shared earlier on, I've been practicing mindfulness for quite some time on and off. Uh, but most of the time, I try to clock in 15 minutes, 25 minutes. And I think it has been really, really useful for me. Um, the science may has actually shown that it is really helpful. Uh, and personally, there are some application out there you can try. Headspace, Calm, 10% Happier. All these are very useful for you to run through bite size. And uh, just give it a go. I, I think uh, you'll be able to see the difference very shortly. Uh, and uh, it might really be very beneficial for you. I, I personally would think that this mindfulness practice has helped me to do a lot of things better. Uh, for example, uh, I have been a smoker for decades. Uh, I try to quit on and off, never really works. But uh, when the mindfulness uh, habit kicks in, uh, or when I started my mindfulness practice, uh, I, the last time I touched a cigarette was February of last year. So it really helped me to just drop it, go cold turkey, I have somewhat dropped alcohol as well, uh, probably about 90% of my intake. 
and also I'm off caffeine. Uh, so I think, again, the mindfulness part really, really helps. So uh, thank you so much for your time today. I've reached the end of my presentation. If you wish to continue the conversation, uh, you may like to check out my website. Uh, my website is agenttan.com.sg where I write a lot about future of work. Uh, or you could just look up for me on my LinkedIn. So this is my LinkedIn page, it's my face here. So uh, if there's anything, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I will hand this over back to Arriva. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sir Adrian Tan. Everybody, big hand for our resource speaker for this afternoon. So, Sir, don't you go away because uh, we will be having our two to three minute break. And after that, we are going to entertain questions. And there are three kinds of questions we will be having. The first type of question will come from the Q&A box. And the second would be coming from the FB Live. And thirdly, I have a set of uh, preset questions, present questions, and we will be doing our best to answer them all. So with that, again, you know what, uh, to just wrap everything up or recap what, of course, uh, Sir Adrian Tan has discussed, the challenges uh, we've, we are facing working from home, the six steps management can do, I love it as well. And even your individual productivity tips on, on how to be productive individually. And maximizing your downtime. I believe a lot of us ha have learned from Sir Adrian. So I encourage everyone to type in your question, not at the chat box, but at the Q&A box. And in two minutes time, we'll be right back. We promise and don't go away. You're participating.